this again. <laughs> Welcome to the world of um, virtual presentations. I'm sure everybody has ran into this problem. Let's start this again. Good morning. My name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world how to empower the animals they work with and the people that work with them. We do that through our live streaming services, which you can find on our website, uh, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, let me know if this live stream, if anybody's having a problem um, viewing this live stream. We had some te technical difficulties here a couple of minutes ago. Tim, am I live? Can you see me? Am I frozen? Um, for those that may be new, my name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. Uh, you can, okay, good. Hey, Jennifer. Um, sorry, we're going live a half hour late because I had some technical difficulties. Um, you can find our live streams on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern unless otherwise noted. Um, and the only time we go live at a different time, well, there's a couple times, whether we have cocktails with the critters or whether we have guests. Otherwise, if we have a guest, we'll go live at 9 a.m. Eastern. Um, and we do have a guest getting ready to come on that is being scheduled. She's from Africa. So I will make sure everybody has plenty of time um, to know the difference. So um, for those that may be new, I show my work and I teach people all over the world how to interact with animals using positive reinforcement in the science of behavior called applied behavior analysis. Um, you can find out more about what we do on our website, which I just had posted, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. We have a lot of events coming up and I'm getting ready to head out west. So you can track what we're doing, where we're going to be on our events page here in our Facebook or on our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. You can also sign up for our email newsletter, which will show you um, things new that we've done and things that are coming up. Okay, so hello again, everybody. <laughs> um, a lot of people watch these replays, so I try to make it uh, very beneficial for people who are attending the live stream. Um, to engage and interact. And today's topic is nails to tails. And how we came up with this is um, I do a lot of live streaming I, with animals. Um, and I also do a lot of recordings. I have a ton of recordings on my phone and on my desktop. And I tend to not be the most organized with them. So nails to tails is part of my own behavior modification plan where I put these photos and videos together for you. Most of them nobody has seen before. And then it forces me to file them because once I'm done with this live stream, I trash all the content that's in it. And that forces me to make sure it's filed. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thanks again for joining. Um, so I have plenty of photos and videos coming up for you, um, some never seen before, even in our projects, um, but they're usually clips of what's getting ready to come in the projects and the memberships, which are our annual subscriptions you can find on our Facebook or on our website. Okay, so good morning, Krista. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Shelly, Debbie, Melinda, Beth. Uh, good morning. So... A lot of you have asked for our target sticks, our smaller lollipop target sticks for smaller mammals, reptiles, um, smaller birds. So we now have them. We have them. And this past week in getting them on our website, I went in and showed some training with some different animals. Um, so I shot a picture of red, the red rough lemur, and a target is when you ask an animal to touch a particular body part to an object. 
Um, they can be numerous. I use head targets to help teach an animal. This is exactly where I want your head to be. That's going to earn. If you put your head in this position, it's going to earn you reinforcement. Head targets are great for um, if an animal has a bite history and you teach them when you touch your head to this particular target and keep your mouth closed, that's what's earning you reinforcement. So here we're showing teaching red a nose target. He's the red rough lemur. A lot of times I teach nose targets in the beginning um, to help teach the animal contingency, meaning if this, then this. Um, so you can get an animal to move from point A to point B, step on a scale. I have a video somewhere of me teaching a um, cormorant to step on a scale by following the nose target. If you guys want to see that, I will show you in an upcoming um, topic. Um, I train several different reptiles. My favorite reptile to train are alligators. Um, but you can see there's, and I have a video coming up showing how you shape this behavior. Um, it teaches an animal where to go and what is earning it the reinforcer. It's often one of the first things I teach to help the animal understand um, you're just as involved in this training as I am. We're a team together. So let's see if this video shows. I asked our uh, former intern, Maddie Baugh, to, I gave her this small target stick and said, go home, train one of your smaller animals, uh, preferably a reptile, because a lot of times people don't think reptiles are trainable. That is not the case. So let me enlarge this video. And you can see this gecko learning. So here comes the target stick. Oop, and the gecko is learning. Good. When you touch the target stick, the mealworms are delivered. And you can hear the excitement in Maddie's voice. So training using positive reinforcement and applied Good. analysis should be fun for both of you. This is why studies show if you're actually using positive reinforcement, it's the animal's preferred form of enrichment. It's my, I love training because I love seeing these animals empowered. You'll watch this gecko reach and he doesn't lick the target stick. Good. When you touch your nose to the target stick, this comes. Now Maddie can teach the gecko how to step on a scale. Um, move from point A to point B. If you're working with an animal that yes. you cannot touch or does not, or finds touch as an aversive, this is a great way to um, teach them how to clean their enclosure. We're doing Good this job. right now in the parrot project with parrots, how to teach them um, to get them to move from point A to point B without even having to touch them. And touching in the future may be an option, but your training will show you this. Um, this is a video I think I posted on my personal Facebook page a couple of weeks ago, but I don't think I ever posted it here. And this was something that I just decided, you know, I'm sitting here in my office. Why not start training an animal from a different room in my office? Um, and there's a lot more to this than what I'm showing. So this is Kuki, the laughing kookaburra. Um, this building is 2,500 square feet with one, two, three, four, five, six different rooms. So you guys will hear me a lot talking about um, training, teaching complexities in your training um, because studies show with predictability comes boredom. So I thought, why not shape the behavior of teaching Kuki? And this was several training sessions. I want to say, didn't take many, um, to teach her to fly from that play gym in the back in a different room through the door to get to me. 
Um, this is a slow motion video. So at this point in the beginning, I may lure the animal, but I have faded out the lure. <clears throat> you see, all I'm giving is the cue. And then she has learned because the first time she flew to the other side of that window and here she's and I've had to shape this. I had to shape this complexity. So when I started, I stood at the door, asked her to fly across the room to my hand. Um, and then throughout these training sessions, I started placing her further and further and further away um, from my office door and have faded out the lure. And the reason I fade out the lure is because if you don't fade it, the animal tends to always have to see it in order to give you that behavior. Um, and ex especially in emergency conditions, I do not want to have to rely on where's the treat or where's the reinforcer. I want to rely on knowing that I have that cue, this behavior is trained. So I'm not sure if this video is going to show. Mm, let's try it anyways. Nope. Um, I can... This is me teaching a uh, giraffe to station. Hmm, I thought I had several different videos in here, but I was teaching a giraffe to station. I'll try it again. Um, I do, let's see if we can hit play here. I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'll put it in an upcoming live stream. So, um, working with these two giraffes, they're in separate stalls, but their bodies are so big and their necks are so long that they can reach each other. And when we start training each one of them, we're showing this in our level two membership. Um, when we start training each one of them, you'll see they start um, getting into each other's spaces um, to earn the reinforcer. So Lindsay Douglas and I said, let's separate them. So they started following the target sticks. Um, you know what? If you go to our YouTube station on the Animal Behavior Center, you will see the video. Um, and you'll see how I am directing the one giraffe where I want it to go. And I want it to put its head through this certain um, area in its stall to learn how to earn the reinforcer. So that shows an example, how you get an animal to move from point A to point B. Because can you force an animal? Yes. In the work that I do, do you want to force an animal? Absolutely not. You want to teach it contingency for numerous reasons, because it's the most effective form of communication that I've found. It's the most humane form of communication that I've found. And it's easy and the animal understands. Um, Lisa asked, how do you get them to take that first leap? You're talking about the kookaburra. If I have to, and I just shot this video the other day of training two black cask hornbills. Um, I did upload a vote video, or I did a live stream yesterday in the level two membership showing how, where I begin working with an extremely fearful animal extremely fearful. Um, but what I'll do, Lisa, to take that first leap, if you're talking about the kookaburra and not the gecko, let me know which one. Um, I will stand right in front of them, stand right in front of them and lure them and ask them, jump, jump, or step, step, step. Then I'll start taking a couple steps back um, and then start jumping, then start using your wings. Um, and that's a behavior called shaping. Yep, the kookaburra. And then I'll start training distance and start training complexity, start fading out the lure so the animal understands contingency. That is all a process called shaping, reinforcing um, small approximations towards the target behavior. Oh, there's the rest of my videos. I thought I lost them. Um, so... One of the next things, it isn't showing all my videos because I restarted the live stream. They all didn't upload. Um, I'll make sure I put them in. Good morning, Jen. Um, I'll make sure I put them in the upcoming enrichment um, live stream I have. So 
what was one of the next ones? Oh, I was going to show three pigs that are known to charge the door. Um, and I'm showing how to counter condition. So a lot of times, like you hear me say, if that animal can see, hear, smell, or feel you, you're training it anyways. The key question is, what are you training it to do? Um, so these three pigs knew that every time the door opened, um, there would be food being delivered on the other side and they would just bulldoze you over to get to the food. So that video shows me teaching them when I open the door and you stop and stay in that position on the outside of the door, that is what's earning you the reinforcer. And then back up on cue. So I started training them all to back up on cue. And then the next step would be I like to train animals by, I can add in another cue saying their names. And then when they come forward, I deliver the reinforcer. And at the same time, I'm delivering the reinforcer for the other two to, for staying where they are. And that's a step a lot of people miss is they forget when they're training more than one animal. If you're wanting one animal to come to you, fly to you, target, and the other animal is stay, staying behind, don't forget to deliver the reinforcer for the animal stationing in the background. Otherwise, they're going to start moving towards the reinforcer. Lisa, Lisa says, Caesar wants to come to me. He gets in what looks like a position to do it, but he can't twist the leap. I'm not exactly sure. Lisa, if you're working with the bird, you should seriously take a look at the parrot project and that's on the animal behavior centers website under, I believe it's memberships. We are working on all kinds of things in level two with numerous species of animals and in the parrot project with just parrots and a few other birds. Um, I'll have, a, I have another video for you, but I wanted to show you this. So I put in this live stream. Some of them didn't show up training of a gecko, training of two giraffes, training of three pigs, um, training of the kookaburra. I have another video coming up right after this of something I just started with Rico. Let me put this side by side because um, so you can see, I took this picture the other day because it's a situation I'm all, when I'm working with animals, even when they're in the other rooms, I'm always listening to behavior. And we have so many windows around the Animal Behavior Center and through different rooms of the Animal Behavior Center. So I can, if I can't hear behavior, I can watch it from a different room because that is where my education is. So I'm always paying attention to behavior. And when behavior is not going um, in the direction I want it to, and how I determine what I, what I want it to do is, is it desirable for the animal? And is it desirable for the two of us to have a future together? Um, so I was walking around this room, getting ready to do something. And I looked up and boom, this is what I saw. And what you're seeing is a cockatoo on this rope on the left. And what you may not be able to see is in this enclosure on the right, there's another cockatoo sitting on that rope on the right. Now me, I'm like, why is this bird on the left sitting in this position? Because I'm always identifying reinforcers. That bird is sitting there for a particular reason. And I know that the bird on the left is Coco, is very attracted to the bird on the right, which is Rico. The roles are not the same when they're reversed. Rico doesn't have, currently have a high value for Coco. But if I were to walk between these two birds, I guarantee you that bird on the left would boom, lunge at me. And so these are little red flags that I want to pay attention to no matter what the species. If I'm working with an overbonded pair, one animal that's bond overbonded to me, um, I want those little red flags to go up to sit because if I'm to walk in between these, especially if it's flighted parrots, if it's primates, 
if it's dogs resource guarding, um, if I am to walk in between the two of them and the undesired behavior happens, boom. Um, if it causes me to back away, if that's the what the animal wanted, I guarantee I've just reinforced it. Um, I won't know until I try it again, which I don't want to try again. Because the other thing about having to retrain or counter condition is the animal has already learned that the undesired behavior to us has earned reinforcement and is a des desired behavior to the animal. I don't want to have to counter condition if I can prevent it. A lot of times because I'm working with animal, a wide variety of animals, I am counter conditioning because somebody else is unknowingly conditioning an undesired behavior. Um, so I'm always paying attention to that. Um, here's a video I have that I just took yesterday evening, right before I did our live stream in the parrot project. My good friend, Vicki Ronchetti, which is a professional dog trainer out in Oakland, California, once told me trick training tricks. If I have, I don't usually have the luxury of training tricks, so we rearranged certain environments at the Animal Mood Behavior Center uh, the past two days so I can have more time to train tricks. I'm really focusing my time on all the projects and memberships that we offer, upcoming webinars and some other things um, to provide education to people working with species, different species of animals all over the world that want to know how to do better. So, in or if I'm finding myself consistently short on time and training, which I do not want to do, that is why I'm in this to empower animals and to educate the public, I will rearrange the environment so it's super easy for me to train. So we took this table and we placed it in Rico's enclosure yesterday. And we set up a large 10 foot table out in the middle of the room so we can train numerous different animals throughout the day. But I'm training this trick and this is teaching Rico who is very bond. Okay, now let me tell you a couple different things. So just because this is a bird, you can still apply this to other animals. So let me give you a couple different scenarios. Overbonded, okay? This particular animal is extremely bonded to me. Um, you will see this in this video. Watch how he does not want to lose physical contact with me. That is a behavior. That is a potential behavior concern. I don't care if this is a primate, a parrot, um, a goat, I don't a dog. I don't care what it is. This is a potential behavior concern, overbonding, because what overbonding does is it can cause unnecessary stress for the animal, unnecessary stress for the handler, unnecessary stress for other caretakers. So I'm teaching him a trick. And Vicki Ronchetti told me one time a long time ago, what tricks do is help us fine tune our application, our approach and our technique in training. So what I'm teaching Rico to do is just pick up this object and drop it in this dish. Now watch how he does not want to lose contact with me. That is a behavior that I'm paying attention to and I'm laughing. Good. So this type of training makes relationships stronger can build relationships. Good. Good. Do you hear me say that I get you to step off my hand? So once he learns I'm looking to place this object into the dish, I start placing <laughs> it. I'm laughing because he will not move from my hand. So watch at the end of the video, I identify the reinforcers on it. It's not just banana beef food in a salon. So 
and placing the object even further so he removes one foot, leaves one foot out. So I take the object and move it even further to see if I'll step off my side. Good. Notice I'm not moving my hand away, so it's <laughs> I think I'm coming up at the end of the video, so watch, watch behavior, because this is what I'm doing. I placed it far enough away that he has to move off. What do I deliver? He hasn't done the particular task yet. Good. I've delivered three reading courses. Does anybody want to tell me what they are? So I've asked him, I've placed the object far enough away that he has to step off of me. I am not moving my hand away from him. If I move my hand away from him, I'm likely going to be reinforcing all kinds of other undesired behaviors. It can actually positively punish the very behavior um, that I'm trying to train. So Krista Grant says food. Correct. There's one. Um, and word, yes, he gets verbal attention from me, tactile attention. Um, he gets the food. Gabriella says, treat your praise and you placed your hand closer to him so he could touch it. Yep. Um, and Debbie, correct. Verbal, tactile, and food. So, so many people think and they get stuck that the only reinforcers to use are food. When we are training so many times, food is only a percentage of the reinforcer we're delivering. So he gives me the behavior that I want. He steps off of my hand. So he goes over and picks up the block and drops it back in the dish. I bridged, delivered the food reinforcer, I told him how good he was. So there was the verbal reinforcer. And then I moved my hand back in to give that tactile reinforcer because he didn't want to leave it in the first place. So that shows it's of high value. Okay. Now, some of you may say, but yeah, you're working with over bonding. Aren't you just reinforcing the concern of over bonding? Thanks, Debbie. Um, Not necessarily. This is a process called shaping, reinforcing small um, approximations towards the desired behavior. If I do not give him my hand back, that's what he didn't want to leave. Um, I could have, and if I let the video go longer, what happened is I asked him to step off my hand again. I took too big a step in training and he took the cube through it and ran away. End of training session. I, I pushed him past. I took too big of a step, pushed him past his comfort level. It wasn't worth it. Um, was that frustration possibly in him throwing the cube? Um, but you know what? I won't make that mistake again. I know to take smaller steps. So I'm slowly going to shape the behavior of him stepping off my hand for longer and longer periods of time. Um, so... I apologize for the technical difficulties. I know there were at least two videos that didn't show up in this live stream. Um, I do appreciate the majority of you coming back to watch this. Um, stay tuned. Our topic next week, I do believe I'm training. I have to take a look at my schedule, but I do believe I'm live streaming the training with a deaf and blind dog. Okay, that was born deaf and blind. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So I'll be live streaming from my phone. I chose not to do it this week because I didn't sweep my floor. So if you like the work that you've seen here, take a look at our website. Join us every Sunday morning. Um, 
If you want more intense work, take um, learning and education, take a look at our memberships. Um, I forgot to mention that in our memberships, your podcast, your latest podcast was uploaded last week. And um, we have our projects if you're interested. And we also have our webinars. And speaking of that, I am scheduling a live streamed webinar coming up. Um, if you are interested in attending our live streamed online webinars, make sure you're on our email list. Shoot me an email to make sure we don't miss it. All right. Thank you, everybody. You are very welcome, Jen. Thank you, Iris. Thank you for attending and bearing with my technical difficulties. I was on the phone or I was online with them. Behavior issue solved. It will not happen again. Have a great week, everybody.